I'm Amanda Freitag. I'm a judge on Food Network's Chopped. And today, you and I are going to cook shrimp cocktail. This is one of my recipes from my book, The Chef Next Door. The best way to make the most delicious shrimp cocktail is to do it yourself. Yes, you can. You can do it. And you have to start out with beautiful, fresh shrimp that is in the shell. This is the only way to get the freshest, most delicious shrimp cocktail by starting here. And we're gonna cook the shrimp in the shell. Now I know this seems a little scary and you maybe haven't done it before, but the reason why is that you'll have beautiful shrimp, multiple things. The outside meat will be nice and smooth, not mealy. The shape of the shrimp will be perfect, not curled up, not all different shapes. So there's a reason for this. And we're getting really good flavor into the shrimp by using a poaching liquid. Now, poaching is again another thing that you may not be comfortable with, but honestly, all it is is cooking in water that's been seasoned. The thing to remember in the kitchen is you're in control, the food is not. So, what I have here is about eight cups of water in a pan. I've already got it going. You can see it's starting to simmer a little bit, but we need to season the water and that will impart flavor into the shrimp, but not too much. We want things like lemon, black pepper, bay leaf, salt. So I'm gonna put about a teaspoon of kosher salt. I really like to cook with kosher salt. You must always put your salt out in a container. It's so much easier to gauge. You can't just pour from a box. You could pour too much. You can't really tell. I say get your hands dirty. Get your hands in the salt. When you need to measure, use a measuring spoon. But honestly, having your salt out there to feel, touch in a container is the best way to season. So a teaspoon of kosher salt. We have a quarter cup of white wine. I love putting wine in poaching liquid for seafood. If you don't want to use wine, you can use vinegar or you can just add extra lemon. But I love that wine flavor. It goes really well with the shrimp. A couple of tablespoons of black pepper corns. I'm using black pepper corns as opposed to ground pepper because it's just going to come out of there. It's not going to be a part of the dish. I don't want the pepper ground because I really don't want the shrimp to be spicy, nor do I want it to have speckles of black pepper on it. I'm gonna put in some bay leaf. If you can find fresh bay leaf, it's fantastic and definitely use it. But dried bay leaf is such a great staple in your pantry. It adds really good flavor to the poach. And then we're just gonna do some lemon slices. And for something like this, which is a poach, it doesn't matter how this is cut good time to practice your knife skills, but these lemons are going to come out of here and they're just going to be thrown away after we get all the flavor. So I'm just cutting them, seeds, skin and all, everything in here. And this gives it the flavor of the lemon juice, the flavor of the lemon peel, the lemon oil. I mean, I just, I can't live without lemon. I love it in every dish. So it's going in, it's simmering. And as soon as it comes to a simmer, I'm gonna put the shrimp in. Now again, everything on. This is, the, think of the shell as the protector, right? We wanna protect the meat of the shrimp. It's so tender and delicious. We don't want it to get beaten up in the water. We don't want it to get exposed and get too mealy. We want it to be beautiful. That's the trick. And also, what you may have heard, the shells have a lot of flavor. And honestly, that little ring of shrimp cocktail that you could get pre-packaged is not gonna have the same freshness. It's not gonna have the same flavor. And you can really spice it up with your poaching liquid. If you want to add some garlic to this, give that shrimp a little garlic flavor, go ahead. Some onions, some shallots. You can really get creative with this because that's gonna impart flavor into your shrimp. And your guests are gonna love it if they're surprised by a bite of this simple looking shrimp that has all this flavor. So I'm gonna turn down the heat a little bit to a simmer. I'm gonna put the shrimp in and I'm gonna make sure that once it goes in, that it's moving around. That they're not on top of each other because that's gonna help them cook more evenly. And you can already see, this is another great reason to cook your shrimp with the shell on. It's an indicator of when it's cooking. You can see they turned pink. 
the shell will tell you almost when it's done. It's almost like a turkey with, <laughs> with those little timers inside of it. You'll see the flesh. Uh, it's going to be more opaque than translucent. You'll see the shell become really pink, almost red, and then you'll know. If you wanted to put on a timer, I'd say it's anywhere between three to five minutes. I'll show you a, an example of what to look for, and then you'll know. And if you've cooked shrimp in the past, let's say just in a pan without the shell, you know that it cooks very quickly, and you just want to look for when it's pink and white all the way through. So I'm going to check these out. Now another key is we're not shocking these shrimp. We're not going to put them in an ice water, which you may have heard of the terms blanching and shocking. Shocking is a, a method used for vegetables where you stop the cooking with ice water. If I was to put these in ice water, or if you were to put these in ice water, you may lose some flavor and they may get soggy. And you don't want that. You don't want soggy, mealy shrimp. We're working so hard to make them so beautiful. We want to keep them that way. So take a look and you can see the shell is pink. The interior is white all the way through. And that's when you know you're ready. Does your shrimp look ready? Are you ready? <laughs> OK, I'm ready. And now my water is starting to come up to a bit of a boil, so I'm just turning it off. And that's another way to tell. When the water gets hotter, the shrimp is fully cooked, and you want to stop. So what we have, instead of using an ice bath, we just have a sheet tray with paper. You can use wax paper. You can use plastic. We just want to spread them out to cool. And the key is to make them super cold before we peel them and serve them, because nobody wants lukewarm shrimp cocktail. Honestly, this is just one of those things. I know it's old school. I know it's classic. But your family, your friends, your guests always love seeing this when they walk into a party. I know my brother loves shrimp cocktail. It's one of his favorites. My mom always used to get it for him on his birthday. And I get it. I mean, it's delicious. And then most of it is about the cocktail sauce. But what I really want you to get used to is really focusing on the shrimp. Because if the shrimp is good, just eating a piece of shrimp will be as satisfying as dipping it into delicious cocktail sauce. So I'm just going to spread it out so they cool evenly. Same thing like when I was cooking them. Spread them out so they cook evenly. Spread them out so they cool evenly. And then make sure you have a clear shelf in your fridge. Put them in and cool them down. So I have some that I did earlier because I want to show you what they look like when they're cool. And I want to show you now how to manage them and clean them. This is an incredibly important part of this dish. Again, so simple, but if not done correctly, it's not as good as it could be. These are completely chilled. They look gorgeous. And also, when they're cooked, they're much easier to peel. So we're going to peel and devein. Now you hear a lot about this. You may or may not see us judging on chopped and saying, they gave us the shrimp and they didn't devein it. Oh my god, they're going to be chopped. You don't want to be chopped on this one. <laughs> you want to make sure you give your guests clean shrimp. Think about what we would say as judges. So what I'm going to do is peel them all first and then go back and devein. I'm just going to show you a couple. And you do it along with me, and then you'll see it's the same thing. It's just repeating the process. So I start in here, and I open it from here. This is the best way to, to peel it, because you're not trying to get in on this hard outer shell. There's already an opening. So many things in cooking just sort of lead you to the easy way to do it. So just go with it. OK, and then I loosen that. I'm going to keep the tail on. So that's, that's the way to hold it. That's the way to dip it. And basically, it's almost like it unfolds itself, right? So you open it up from the center, take off the shell, and it's ready to go. We're going to set it up on our cutting board to devein. We're going to do it again. Any lemon or pepper that may be left on the shrimp, just discard it. And we're going to look at the inside here. We're going to open it up take it down to where we want it, and then just peel it off. 
Now these peels, you might ask, can I use these for a stock or use these again? They've already been cooked. Some of their flavor is left inside of this poaching liquid. So they're not really gonna give you any flavor to make a soup or a sauce with. But you can save that poaching liquid and use it again. You can poach salmon in it, you can poach lobster, you can poach shrimp again. So I'm gonna do one more so you're feeling good. You're feeling good with this? Easy, right? Once they're cooked, they're so easy to peel. And even if you can't get the hang of doing it from the middle, start from the top, just open it up so that you can peel down to that tail. Okay, ready to go. Make sure you get all of it off. And now, the most important part. You can see it's more obvious on some shrimp where the vein is. And on some, it doesn't look like there's one at all. But you have to open them all up to find out, which is fine. You're not losing that much shrimp. You're really just cleaning them. So let's go with a more obvious one first. Take a nice sharp knife, small to medium knife, and just run it along the back of the shrimp there, down to the tail. And you're basically just opening it because you don't want to cut too far into the shrimp. You just want to expose what needs to come out and that needs to come out. If you're uncomfortable with this, if this grosses you out, <laughs> you can rinse it under water. But I think it's just, again, better to not take any flavor away. You created a lot of flavor now. If you put this in water, it's gonna take some flavor out. So you can use your knife. And I have also a little wet paper towel. Use your knife, wipe off the vein from the knife, you can use your fingers, whatever it takes to get that out. It's a little bit sticky, but it's so worth it because these shrimp are delicious. And once this is gone, they're beautiful. How's that feel? Weird? Gross? Not so gross? It's really not so bad. It comes out easily. Use your knife, use your fingers and then you have beautiful shrimp. And we're gonna do it again. Now, let's do one that doesn't look like it has it at all. What could we discover in there? Is it in there? Is it not? And this is exactly how we would do it in a pro kitchen. We would take all of the shrimp, we would peel them all first. Then we would line them up and we would devein them. It's an efficient way of working. You get rid of all the shells, then you have all your shrimp ready for the next step. In every recipe that I write, I like to put a prep section because any chef in a restaurant would always do prep before they start cooking. And I want you to do the same because it takes a lot of the burden off and it speeds up your cooking. So let's see what's in here. Oh, it's in there. We found it. <laughs> it didn't look like it was, but it is. So you really do have to do the work of opening them all up. So just be careful not to get too much of the shrimp meat. If you get some of it, it's okay. But there you go, it's nice and clean. And you just keep going. And what I'm doing <clears throat> is the way I've cut it to expose the vein, I'm just kind of putting that back, making sure that's smooth and beautiful. And that's really about the presentation, honestly. Like we eat with our eyes, we want to present it, we did all this work, we want to show how beautiful our shrimp is. And you can see the way they're shaped, the outside is smooth. If you had done this without the shell, it would be mealy and they would all be curled up. So this is a great technique. Okay, so we're gonna move on to everybody's favorite part, the cocktail sauce. I'm working with a cutting board that has a little bit of shrimp and a little bit of the shrimp veins on it. So I don't want to make the cocktail sauce on the same board. So you can either rinse it or just flip it. And as you see, I have a wet paper towel underneath which helps stabilize the cutting board. Okay, shrimp cocktail, cocktail. What does cocktail mean? It's not a drink, it's a sauce. This has been around for ages and we still love it. And there's a million different ways to make it. But for me, I like the most straightforward, the simplest recipe. But for you, you can do whatever you want. Spice it up, spice it down, put a little mayo in it, 
You can do anything. Honestly, this is what I call a refrigerator sauce. You have all this stuff in your fridge. You probably have a bottle of prepared horseradish on the door of your refrigerator right now. So this is a really good product. It lasts forever. I remember my grandmother <laughs> looking inside of her fridge and she would have one of these and then she would have one of these that was also with beet. And it would always be there. It was always in her fridge. So this is horseradish that has vinegar in it. So vinegar actually brings out that vapor, that spiciness of the horseradish. You can use fresh horseradish. Now, a lot of people have never, ever, ever even seen fresh horseradish. It's sometimes hard to find, but you may find it in your gourmet grocery store. It's a root and it's big and you can grind it yourself and grate it yourself. And I'm just gonna show you a little end because I think this is really eye-opening to a lot of people of what this looks like. Horse radish, right? It's a radish. Radishes sometimes have that really spicy, peppery note to them. That's why this is so good and spicy. But honestly, the fresh is not as spicy as the prepared. So you can do a blend, you can do all fresh, or you can just do prepared. And you basically just peel off the skin it's like a potato, like ginger. It's that kind of a root vegetable. And you can do it with a knife because the outer peel is very firm. Or you can use a peeler, just a really sharp one. You may have to peel it a few times. And you can see how sturdy this root is. Whatever you're more comfortable with. And depending on your horseradish, it may be bigger, it may be smaller. Just make sure you get all this skin off. This is not delicious and not tender. But right now as I'm peeling it, I can smell it. It's like really strong vapor, almost like wasabi. You know when you first get that sniff of wasabi? It's clearing my sinuses right now. Okay, so we peel it down and this is the fresh. So what I can do is grate this into my sauce. And I can do it on a box grater, that's what we call it. Um, or I could do it on a microplane to be a little bit finer. I would do it on this blade to make sure that it's fine enough to eat in the sauce. It's beautiful. It's brighter, a little bit brighter than the prepared just because it's just grated, and I'm gonna add that in. I like my cocktail sauce spicy. Spicy with horseradish, spicy with a little bit of black pepper. You can add hot sauce, you can add cayenne, you can add chili, you can add whatever you like to spice it up. You can add Old Bay seasoning to give it that really seafood flavor. So I'm gonna grind a whole bunch of black pepper inside of here as well. I love that black pepper flavor. Obviously inside this bowl there's ketchup, that magical ingredient that makes everything taste delicious. I'm gonna put in some prepared horseradish. Now, yes, I'm giving you a recipe for this and you are gonna use the recipe. And what I advise when you're making a recipe for the first time is to stick with it and then the next time, put your own twist on it. I'm gonna use a teaspoon to get in there. And I'm gonna squeeze this lemon. You're gonna use one lemon to start and then you're gonna taste it and you're gonna see if you want more acidity. I love the lemon in here. You can also serve your shrimp cocktail with a little bit of lemon in case somebody wants that. Just fresh lemon over their shrimp. So let's see. I've always, this is for tasting, I've actually always wanted, I'm gonna use a spatula, to be in the kitchen with the people who are cooking my recipes. And I finally get to do this because sometimes I feel like the cook, the amateur cook might give up. And I don't want you to give up because it's the only way you're gonna learn. And what's the worst thing that can happen? Really, what is like the worst thing that can happen? You burn it, you throw it away, you have to call for takeout. You just gotta get in there and try it. So I'm gonna taste this. Woo! 
that's got a kick, which I wanted and I like. I'm getting sweetness from the ketchup. I'm getting a little heat from the black pepper, but mostly I'm getting that heat and vapor from the horseradish, the fresh and the prepared that has the vinegar in it. I'm gonna go with a little bit more lemon because I want a little bit of sweetness and I want a little more sour. Ketchup really has a lot of sugar in it. And I don't want this to taste like ketchup. I want this to taste like lemon and horseradish and black pepper with a, with a tomatoey base. So it's really important to bring out those other flavors. So I added this lemon in because I wanted that. I like the acidity of the lemon. I like the sweetness of the citrus. But if you tasted it before and you liked it as it was, just leave it. You know, we're doing this together but I want you to put your own twist on it. I want you to be your own chef and know what you like and that creates your style. So if you want more black pepper, add it now. If you wanna grab the hot sauce, put it in. You know, if you want more horseradish, go for it. This is the time. Um, but I like this right now. I think it tastes delicious. I think it's really well balanced. I'm gonna clean up and we're gonna serve our shrimp. Yum. Okay. Ooh, also that paper towel under your cutting board makes for a really good cleanup. Ding! So we have our cocktail sauce, we have our beautiful shrimp. They're ice cold, they're ready to be served. I'm gonna put the cocktail sauce in a bowl. I'm gonna really fill it up because I know that my guests and my family love to dip in the sauce. So I'm giving them extra so that they can dip as many times as they want, just no double dipping. And really this is it. A couple of lemon slices on the, on the side. Taste it, tell me what you think. Tell me if you can feel the difference between cooking your own shrimp or store-bought already prepared. I know you can do this. I know you're gonna love it. Serve it at your next party or just have it for dinner. Let me know what you think. I'm going in. I like a lot of sauce. Oh my God. There is nothing like that flavor. It's nostalgic. It reminds me of, of old school dinner parties. I love horseradish with the ketchup, the black pepper, the lemon. It's such a good foil to the shrimp. The shrimp is tender. It's sweet. It has a nice bite to it. And there's so much flavor. Honestly, this is the best way to do the shrimp cocktail. Do it yourself. Take the time. Use the poaching liquid. Do it with the skin on. I promise you're going to love it. Going back in. That was a double dip. 